Hello, uh, I'm Krzysiek with my wife. We create uh, game planes on YouTube channel. Also, we have an uh, Instagram account where you can find a lot of uh, board game photos. Uh, you can search it, uh, it. I mean that uh, Instagram account, putting Grafinka, and you will see this, uh, this logo. In this panel, I will tell you something about uh, photography, and you will get to know some photography tips, okay? Uh, before we start, I want to warn you, my English uh, isn't pure and perfect, so sometimes I will use very, very uh, basic words to describe uh, what I want to tell you. Okay, let's go with presentation that I prepared for you. Like in school, start, uh, start with theory. Most of examples that you will see here is prepared with standard kit lens that you can see, let's say, at the uh, right side of this present presentation. That means if you have a Dye Saler camera, mirrorless camera, or mirrorless camera without any additional lenses, okay, or even basic compact camera, probably you will be able to create very similar pictures. Uh, first technical aspect is focal length. Kit lenses are zoom lenses. That means you can magnify main theme of the picture. Uh, it's very important. Uh, take a look at the first example. I set focal length at 16 millimeters, so it's kind of zoom out, okay? You can observe uh, that camera is very close to the photo theme. Uh, you can see this one blue mandala stone standing, okay? Let's say this is our uh, photo theme. That can provide problems with focusing. And let's take a look at frame from this setup. Mm, you can observe there, is our, there are unnecessary things in background. Wall and uh, lamp wires, okay? To fix it, let's zoom in our image. So set focal length at maximum, okay, at maximum. So uh, a lot of lenses, a lot, lot of kit lenses uh, should be around 50 millimeters. Now you have to back to move back your camera and found some nice frame. Let's see. Okay. Uh, now it looks better. There is no more garbage in the background. Box fulfills entire background. And I prefer this way to make pictures. Of course, you can use wide uh, lens setting. If you have an idea, there is no any limitations. Uh, only limitations here is your imagination. Okay, we got it. Uh, now let's talk about... Aperture, uh, it can be um, hard thing to talk, or maybe not really. Uh, in a lot of uh, nowadays cameras, you can set these parameters as you want. If the value is smaller, more light goes to the sensor. Sharpness area will be smaller or lower uh, on lower values. Uh, let's check it on examples. Uh, some of lenses can, can have uh, opened aperture to 1.4. You can see that there, uh, on this image, only, um, only blue mandala stone is sharp. Other, uh, other stones are blurred, okay? You can observe what's going on, what's changes, if we increase the value of aperture to that aid, more uh, of the image is going sharper and sharper and sharper. And if we set the uh, high value of aperture, probably you will get whole image in sharp area. Uh, but... Um, High, value, high values of aperture uh, 
forces more light to take a picture, but let's say uh, it will be not the topic for today. Uh, okay, now you know how Aperture works. There is two more standard parameters, um, shutter speed and ISO, ISO sensitive, but we won't talk about it right now. Let's uh, focus on a light aspect. This is the more the most important thing in whole photography. You can use a lot of lot kind of light sources. It can be, um, for example, basic uh, flashlights, basic desk lamps. You can see that I'm using desk lamps. Okay. You can use professional flash lamps uh, with tons of modificators. Uh, you can use uh, photographic uh, RGB LED uh, lamps. My example is uh, basic because I don't have any professional lamp. My main sources of light are two cheap LED desk lamps from local market. And now I will show you how to use them, okay? Uh, I set two lamps on the, uh, to, this, uh, to set this frame, and I set the standard kit lens on my camera to the maximum focal length. It's about uh, 50 millimeters. And let's see how looks light directly, directly from these two lamps. This is our model, uh, Funko Pop Alien, okay? Uh, you can observe a sharp lines between bright and dark parts on our model. There is uh, one very simple way to fix it. Use uh, some kind of diffuser. Let's say, let it be a paper towel or just uh, paper, one sheet of paper from your, from, from, from your printer. That makes the light is soft. Uh, shadows are a little bit brighter than before. See? This one and this one. Here is the place on this uh, green, yellow, yellow spot. You can see the sharp uh, shadow lines. Now it looks much softer. So I prefer to put the uh, some diffusers on your desk lamp. That's a good change, as you can see. But if you have only one lamp, let's see how it looks, okay? Almost whole right side is, is dark. Is uh, not... Yes, okay, it's dark. Uh, to make it look better, you can use homemade light reflector. It can be a white white sheet from your from your printer, okay? Uh, but I prefer to take a sheet of aluminum foil from your kitchen and make something like a reflector. And now you can see the light reflects from the from this reflect reflector. And now we can see. Uh, thief on our model. Yes, that picture is going to look pretty nice. But uh, we have an alien, yes? Alien always lives uh, in space and sometimes they attack the spaceships. So if the aliens go to the spaceships, uh, there probably will be some fire or red uh, alert lamps on the uh, on this spaceship, yes? If you don't have any color lamp, just take... Uh, if you don't have color lamp, it's not a problem. Yes, it's not a problem. You can make a color just putting some kind of uh, red paper or felt behind your uh, between your model and light source. And let's see how it looks right now. But um, yes, now, uh, oh, wait, uh, this picture. Mm, 
yes, this picture. Uh, in this picture, you can see that there is a red light from the right side, and it looks like a real, uh, real red alerts from the spaceship. Okay. Now, you know how uh, to work with with your light. You can you can soft it. You can colorize it. You can uh, take it back from the model to make the to make the light uh, fall down. Okay. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. in the next chapter, we will make make a photo. You should start with a simple setup of your composition, but uh, it's not this photo that you can see right now. We are not going to uh, take this photo. We will take a photo uh, brand new. Mm, moment. You should start with a simple setup of your composition, okay? Put on the main theme of uh, on the front of your camera, camera, and turn on the lights. As you know, the lights uh, should be soft, softened with your uh, paper uh, paper towels. If you look at the picture, you can observe that the whole part, that the whole parts of this photo looks very very flat. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit ill today, and not today, but yesterday too. So sometimes uh, I will, I will sorry. Uh, every part on this photo are highlighted with the same amount of light. It's hard to separate what's the main theme of the photo. So let's try to fix it. Put the light sources down like this. Let's see how it looks before, okay? And we are putting our lights a little bit down. Mm. And check again what happens. Okay, much better. We can see that some parts are in light, some parts are in shadows. Quite nice, but in my opinion, the background is too much highlighted. Try to use some physical barriers will block light flow. Look at the example. I've used uh, some uh, comic books that are physical barriers to the, to the light. Mm -hmm. mm. The angle of the light is mm, have some, some borders. You can see right now the lines. Uh, and this is how the light from the from the lamp is going. Okay, mm, we got it. Now, yes, this uh, this light is okay. Uh, it's easy to see that the blue mandala stone is the main theme of the picture, but it's nearly okay. It's a quite nice picture without using using uh, any uh, photoshopping, for any any additional corrections. It's a photo that was taken directly from the camera. But mm, okay, you can you can put it in your social media, on your Facebook, on your Instagram. Everything is okay. But if you want to make it something more bit, uh, something more uh, dynamic, okay? Let's put some dynamic to this photo. I'm using uh, magic stuff. <laughs> uh, this magic stuff is called blue tuck. Okay, blue tuck is on the left side. Is the is uh, some kind of plasticine, and I use uh, tie wires. Tie wire uh, you can buy in any building market. It's uh, really often uh, you can. Uh, no, it's not really often. It's uh, really really cheap. Uh, okay, blue tuck is a better version of plasticine because it's. Easy to remove, it's not floating, it holds much stronger, and the most important, 
it's dry and don't leave uh, grease, grease spots. Uh, here you can see a short video. I'm, take, I'm putting the blue tag between uh, between parts between the uh, mandala stones. Uh, okay. Now, this is the freest movement, okay? Fake movement. And let's see how it looks. Now, you can observe that there is a fake movement on our picture. I think that this picture is... Oh, I forgot about some... Uh, some blue tag... Uh, some blue tag is visible on this photo. So, on the... Uh, to be honest, I should correct it but I forgot about it uh, when I was preparing this uh, this presentation for you. But uh, here is enough. Uh, it's only to little bit move the the blue mandala stone, the purple mandala stone uh, at the uh, bottom, and everything looks will be looks great. Uh, okay, we got a really nice photograph. Here is another example of fake movement. And uh, at this step, I've used uh, some other lenses than the kit lenses. So these photographs that now I will show you are taken in the past of my photograph journey, okay? Here, there is another video that I can show you. Okay. Uh, I don't any professional strobe lamp, so when you can see movement in my photos, elements probably were sticked with blue tack. Look at this video. Dices were connected with knife and fruits. Uh, let's play it again. Uh, Okay, uh, dices were connected with knife and fruits, and that really looks like a real lie dice roll. Uh, when you are sticking elements together, you have to control and always look uh, on your camera um, to see that any blue tag isn't in view uh, of your camera. This is the magic of uh, perspective. Yes, perspective is a good word. Is a good word to describe this. Uh, and this one, uh, a few few slides before, I told you something about tie wires. Okay. Mm. Uh. Let's see, it's hard to set this final effect without any um, without any professional strobing lamp that can allow you to, to really freeze movement on your of your photograph. We have to make a fake uh, freeze movement. On the, for this example, I use tie wire. I can show you oh wait a moment, it should be muted. On this uh, video, you can uh, see there is a huge lamp, uh, but in fact, it isn't mine. I just borrow it from my friend to to just uh, check some uh, some tips and tricks. But I still don't know to buy it or not to buy. It. But okay, let's see at the at this video. Here you can see. No, where are you going? Again. Here you can see that the dices are sticked and, and they are standing on this tie wire. Uh, I've connected dices with this, of course, using blue tag. Blue tag is a perfect thing in a board game photograph because you have a lot of small parts. You can uh, connect them together and you can pick a photograph. Uh, and again, without uh, professional lamps, it's extremely 
hard to take this picture. Using some tricks like that, of course you can uh, you can take a really nice picture. Uh, note that on the final picture on the left side, you can't see any wires. On all of them are hidden behind dices. Look again at the video. I'm just going back to the camera. Uh, wait a moment. Okay. And now you can see there is no wires. <laughs> magic, right? No, it's not magic. It's a uh, tricks. <laughs> like in real magic. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to the next example. This is another one tip that I want to show you. Uh, you can see the image with the dragons from Koatul that are, uh, I don't know what are they doing, but they are looking at the, uh, at the center of the photograph and uh, the center uh, is blurred because it's a box of this board game look that uh, on the lowest level um, of this photograph now i will show you on the on this video how it was set up mm. so if you want uh, to increase a depth of your photo you can use simply class I don't recommend plexiglass for this trick because it's very easy to scratch it and every scratches will be visible on the final uh, on the final photograph. Mm, put the glass over the background. For example, let it be mm, board game box like in this example. Now you have to focus your camera on the items which lays on the glass. And that's it. Uh, it's very, very easy uh, to do, and the effects can be really, really nice. Uh, it's more than uh, nice because it looks really great without using, using anything special. This is only simple one glass that is standing on the few board game boxes. Can you see? Board, ga board game boxes, uh, a little bit back. Oh, board game boxes, class, dragons, great shot. Uh, next aspect that I want to tell you is uh, is hard to to master to master to to master it. That uh, it's a light painting. Yes, here you can see a die strong. Uh, maybe other uh, words I will use. Tron build it with dices, <laughs> of course, from the dice Tron uh, board game. Uh, board game uh, uh, season one rerolled. Okay, uh, it's not easy technique, but using it, you can achieve really really cool effects. First of all. You have to set your camera into manual mode. A uh, lot of uh, nowadays cameras uh, can set uh, the few uh, modes. You can set manual, priority of aperture, priority of shutter speed. If you want to create these uh, images like that, you can set the manual mode that you have that allows you to control all of the parameters on your camera. It's hard to say how to set these uh, parameters. You have to try, 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 and try, because it depends how many lights is uh, around you. It depends uh, which uh, light source you are using. Mm. Okay, but manual mode, al mode allows you to control all of the parameters including shutter speed. You have to set your shutter speed parameter to the, let's say, few seconds, maybe one, two, three. And if your shutter is long time opened, all the light movement is registered on the camera sensor. Uh, it's hard to 
show you how it looks because if I want to record a video in a kind, um, some kind of uh, making of video, I have to to simply paint on the uh, on the board game components. Also, you can ask that uh, why your dice uh, don't fall down because they are connected with. Blutak. Yes, that's right. They are connected with Blutak and they are not moving. This is a very important thing in painting with light. Okay, uh, this is the effect. This is another picture from Dystron uh, taken using light painting. Uh, you can use different kinds of lights. Even lighter with real light that can uh, create a special effect that something is burning, but I don't like this because it's easy to damage your components. I prefer a uh, fiber, um, how to say it, uh, fiber lamp? Okay, it's fiber lamp, optical fiber lamp. Oh. You can see on this video, you can see my son that is playing with this with this lamp. This is a bunch of uh, optical fibers that are connected on the one side and on this side, there is a source of, uh, source of uh, the light. There is a LED uh, at the end of this. And to create a photo, I'm taking a part of uh, of this bunch and simply like a painting uh, like you want to paint uh, using brush on your uh, on your um, composition and on your board games uh, on your board game components that you prepared for photo you can see uh, unmatched heroes that are uh, highlighted uh, using only and only this LED uh, optical fiber lamp. That's a really uh, nice and little bit futuristic effect you can you can achieve using this light painting. Uh, <clears throat> of course, you have to uh, use BlueTag to fix the elements that you want to photograph to the to the ground or together like this uh, dice throne that you saw in a few moments ago. Okay, uh, one more image from light painting. Uh, and I think this one is my favorite. I placed the mantis on the glass like uh, on the picture uh, with Koatun, I put up the mantis on the uh, on the glass, and from the um, from the bottom, I just painted the movement lines of them. That you can imagine that they are uh, swimming in the deep ocean. It's uh, some kind of magic mantis. Okay, uh, I really like this uh, this photo. Uh, okay, what's next? Mm, this is uh, the light painting. And mm, as I said you a few moments ago, it's hard to, mm, to tell what, uh, what parameters you have to set on your camera. Uh, if you Google light painting photography, there will be a tons of articles that uh, will help you to create photos like that. Or like that, if you want. Okay, okay, that was light painting. My favorite, my favorite is smoke. Yes, this is one of my favorite effects on board games ever and ever and ever I, I'm using. In the past, I've tried to make a smoke uh, using ultrasonic humidifier. 
but effects was uh, really really poor and you can easily damage your uh, cardboard uh, elements of your board game because uh, if you use uh, uh, ultrasonic humidifier there is a uh, steam that lays on your board games and you can damage them uh, you know how cardboards uh, sink the sink the water okay so, I had a problems how to create a smoke. One day, I asked one guy on the internet, on Instagram, okay, how he's creating the clouds in his photographs. Uh, I was thinking that uh, he will tell me something about, oh, it's a magic, or it's real clouds, or just go away, I won't tell you anything uh, that I'm using. But he was a very helpful guy and he answered me uh, and the answer was really, really simply. Electronic cigarette with non-nicotine liquid inside. Yes, that's true. And um, important thing is that you can't smoke too much on your board game components. Smoke creates uh, created from liquid. Maybe it's not toxic, but it can cover your uh, board game components with thin fat layers. Uh, it's enough to take it off using paper towel, but you have to remember that uh, this fat layer will uh, will be on your components. Uh, if you are photographing uh, minifigures, mm, it's a good way to wash them after the photo session. Uh, on this photo, you can see smoke in the background and freezed movement. Mm, you can see on this uh, on this video. Uh, Okay, on this video you can see that the dices are hanged on the fishing, uh, fishing, fishing lines. Yes, of course using blue tack. Um, and the photos is nearly create, but fishing lines uh, have one. Uh, bad thing uh, du uh, during using them. Um, lines were visible, so I had to mask them in software using spot removal tool. Uh, you know, in every dice you can see here and here, there was a uh, straight lines uh, going from the dice uh, to the app and I have to import this uh, photo to the uh, to the software to the photograph software and mask them it's um, this spot removal tool is really easy to use and you can use them too on your computers on your uh, on your smartphones tablets because in internet, you can find a lot of uh, free softwares that allows you to do this. So, um, uh, don't be aware to, to use them. Uh, it's fr it's free. You can use it without any purchasing any license. You can um, correct your photos. Uh, in a simply free two ways, uh, upgrading contrast or highlights or shadows. And as you can see um, on the video, at the end of the video, okay, that the final effect is a little bit different be uh, dif uh, between the photo that was taken directly from the uh, from the camera. Uh, okay, so 
I told you that you can download a free software from the internet. Let's say Rough Therapy or uh, Darkroom. There was, I don't know, but I prefer uh, Rough Therapy. It's easy to use. Uh, if you had some problems, you can you can find some uh, some uh, things in the internet that will help you to uh, to play with this software. Mm -hmm. You can freely mix techniques and tricks. Uh, this example, I've used longer exposure. Maybe not so long exposure, but longer exposure. And I've used a real fl flame, real fire. I've used color lights, little bit of sand, uh, components. And there is a lot of thing that you can uh, see here. Also, you can see uh, there is a lamp at the uh, at the image of the this movie on the right side. There is a lamp, and I've used the uh, talisman Batman board game as my, as a physical barrier to block the part of the light that will be uh, goes to the to the background. I want to. I want a little bit darker background, so I put the physical barrier uh, <laughs> using Batman. <laughs> that sounds funny. Okay, let's see at this video. This is extremely. Um, uh, yeah, you can see there is a fire. There is a fireworks. Uh, and this is uh, extremely dangerous to take it in home. Uh, so, if you don't feel free with fire, don't do this in home. It's really easy to damage your board game components. But if you still want to do this, uh, remember that you shouldn't do this. <laughs> but if you want to do this, uh, you have to secure common co co components, uh, standing them mm, or not maybe components, but putting the flames on the sand, because the sand is a good isolation from the heat from the flame. And, uh, okay. <sighs> mm. Of course, you should have prepared some water and a lot of sand. I prefer to uh, sand because if you put sand on the fire, there will be no flood and your components uh, will, <laughs> if you have some, uh, uh, some luck, your components uh, will be not damaged. Okay, uh, on this next, Photos, photo. I've used a real, uh, real fire again. I create a small fire camp. I use the, um, uh, I use the torch to not torch, but the the small torches that you scratch and they uh, burn. I forgot one word. See. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, but you, uh, but I've created uh, a fire camp. I put the few um, few meeples from the arnak uh, around this, and it looks. And <laughs> uh, let's take at the background of this photo. I've used a small uh, this. How to say it? Uh, your player board, yes, your player board at the background because on the player boards was printed a uh, tents. Tents is a uh, that are you going to the for your holidays under the sky and you are sleeping under tent. Yes, that's right. Okay, and uh, they was printed on these uh, player boards, and I think that's a good composition because you can f uh, you can feel a uh, climate from this photo because you know in the arnak you are traveling through the uh, through the island you are discovering some monsters some places uh, you are collecting the uh, the gems and the sharps and the stones and all of these are on this image there is a journey there is a travel and this is very important to to create a 
history, maybe history on the uh, on your photograph. <sighs> yes, and uh, yellow traveler, yellow nipple traveler from this sun now have a little bit burnt head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because uh, I wasn't uh, warn warning uh, too much and he have now burnt head. But picture is really nice and I think that worth it. Okay, last thing that I show you is reflection. Uh, maybe you know this photo, maybe you don't know this photo, but that was my uh, first, maybe not first, but the first photo what I, which I taken that I'm really, really proud of it. Uh, okay, let's back to the, to the reflection. It's very simple to take. All you have to use is glass. It's a, uh, if you have in your kitchen a cutting desk uh, made with glass, it will be perfect for this kind of photography, this kind of reflection. Just put the, put your glass uh, on flat, put your uh, board game components that you want to photograph on this, on this glass desk, put some background, let it be mm, board game box. It's always a good option to use a board game box as the background. And now all you have to do is use uh, physical barriers that I told you about them, uh, which I told you about them few moments ago, and uh, make the border lines to don't highlight the components at the first plane. All the light should go to the background, not to the uh, first plane. And probably uh, in next step, you have to focus your camera on the, uh, on your uh, main theme of this picture. Uh, first plan with Meeple Animals stays in complete darkness. Uh, I don't have any video that uh, can show you, that will allow you to see how, how it looks, but I think that description is quite uh, enough to, to make this, this photo. Okay. I think that's all what I want to tell you. And now you know some tricks and now you know how to set up the light. And now you know how to color your light to make some special effects, okay? You know how to control your uh, source of light. Remember, the light is the most important thing in the whole photography. Now I will stop this presentation. Okay. Yes, I'm here. And uh, if you have some question uh, about board game photography, I think now it's time to, uh, to tell me about this question and I will uh, try to answer you that you want. I will check on the uh, on the twig, Twitch. <laughs> poor little yellow middle. Yes, he's he's uh, poor, but I think I can mask it using using a uh, uh, little bit uh, of a yellow uh, painting, yellow paint. So uh, I think everything is okay. Where do you draw your inspiration from? Uh, from my head, this is the first inspiration, but uh, if you, you know what, I'm trying to don't observe other people who are, uh, who 
for taking board game pics. I don't observe them on Instagram, on the on uh, Facebook, because I don't want to someone tells me that your images looks uh, the same as uh, someone wo- uh, someone shoot images in the past. Uh, that's the reason I didn't observe uh, other photographs. Uh, how, uh, where do you draw your inspiration? You know what? I on Facebook there are a lot of groups that uh, where people can share uh, the the works, and I'm in uh, inside of a few of these groups, and they are sharing portrait photographs. They are sharing landscapes. Uh, standard product uh, product photography. So if you want to, oh, let's say to make a photography of this pen, uh, you can, of course, uh, oh, I prepared uh, this uh, glass uh, kitchen desk that I uh, told you before, is that. You can see it's uh, really nice. It has really nice reflection. So, and we can put this pen on this glass and take this and take a photo using uh, reflection. And this is the great production photography, just using using reflection. So uh, I take inspiration from uh, groups that are not connected with board games. Yes, that is uh, the inspiration. And also, uh, you know what? Mm, There is one more thing. It's important, it's very important to know your board game uh, because because if you don't know your board game uh, maybe not your board game but board game that you want to photograph if you don't know uh, you can make some mistake uh, connecting wrong components together if I put a victory point a victory uh, point tokens with uh, resources, Maybe someone who knows this game says, "Oh, there is no connection. I know this. This game is uh, this photo is nice, but uh, there is no connection between this uh, this components." So, if you want to photograph a board game that is uh, that you weren't playing yet, uh, it's a good way to read instruction to know the climate, to know the history, to know the flow that is uh, in this in this board game. Uh, are the blue tag reusable? Yes, blue tag is reusable. And I'm using one pack of blue tag from uh, since from uh, more than one year, I prepared. Uh, blue tag in box uh, here you can see this this one box is uh, used blue tag is inside this is blue tag uh, it's not tag but tag as you can read here and this is my <laughs> this is my blue tag that, I, that I'm using uh, to create board game photography and you can see it's uh, oh is broken, but it still it still works. It doesn't st- leaves any fat, uh, any grease uh, spots. And there is another uh, blue pack. This is nearly brand new. This is other color, but uh, oh, here you can see. Oh, there is brand new blue tag. It looks like uh, some kind of wild cookie, maybe, but it's not. You can't use, you can't eat them. Oh, it's blue tag. Uh, there is a huge chance that you met a blue tag in school when teachers were sticking the uh, the papers to the um, to the blackboard. Yes. Okay. I will show you this one, and it will be. Oh, let's say this drawer is a. And it sticks, and will don't fall down until I I take it off. 
Oh, uh, I'm quite sure in my copy of Mandala there was no alien Funkopop <laughs> who contact that board and dies to complain. I think you have to contact with Funko Pop, not with the board that dies. <laughs> That's funny. Also, at least in the United States, Blue Tag can easily be found on Amazon. Our stores everywhere is also quite cheap. Yes, that's right. You can find it everywhere. Uh, the same is about uh, this uh, tie wire. You can see this is the uh, punch of tie wire. I can take it. I can form it. Okay. And it's still uh, holding its position. I can uh, hold anything I want at the end of the of this tongue. Let's use a little bit of the blue tag and we can stick it to the to the pen. And see? It's sticky. And you can take a, a really nice photograph like that from the top of the of your uh, pencil. Mm, focusing on the top of your pencil and the rest of the photograph will be blurred because Optical, that, that works if you set a mm, huge hole in your huge hole diameter in your uh, aperture. About aperture, uh, there is a small old manual lens. I will show you how it works in practice. Okay, here you can see a wide open uh, aperture and if I close it, the holes are the hole are going smaller and smaller. This is maximum closed uh, maximum closed uh, aperture, and it's the same um, with your eyes. If you if you have some problems with eyes with reading from the uh, near field, near, no, you have to you have to close your eyes, and the image is going sharper and it's the same in the photography. Closing the aperture uh, makes that your photograph is going sharper, but you have, but you are losing uh, tons of load, uh, tons, uh, tons of light to, to make your photograph. Uh, tie wire. $7 for 100 meters, also very cheap and strong. Yes, it's very cheap and it's very strong. I really love that all those tips are so easily affordable and the photos are absolutely amazing. Thank you, Ola. <laughs> uh, where money is not a barrier to entry, love it. Yes, uh, I'm trying to use photo uh, to take a photography, not using a... Uh, with uh, items that you can find uh, in your kitchen, in your garage, in your in your drawer, I'm trying to use uh, cheap things to to make photographs. Uh, maybe I will go back a little bit. Uh, okay. So, uh, if you uh, oh, I have uh, one more tip for you. Mm. I use camera, but if you put your camera in your hands and you want to create a photo, uh, your camera can move. Yes, and if there is not, uh, there is uh, low amount of light, it can be. Mm, your photo can be blurred, okay? So, uh, I recommend to use uh, tripod. It don't have to be professional tripod for thousand, uh, thousand dollars. It can be uh, cheap Chinese, uh, Chinese tripod or even gorilla pod. Uh, not maybe not original gorilla tripod because uh, original is very expensive. But if you uh, found something uh, cheaper, I don't recommend buying from China. But 
if I want to pay, let's say, $10 for tripod, Gorilla tripod, I will show you. I will show you that. This is Gorilla tripod. And I will tell you about it a uh, little bit more, but it's a Chinese version. Uh, $10 for this, let's say, and uh, $100 for original tripod. Uh, there is one way, maybe not only one way, but I I choose the cheaper one because this one is uh, enough to create fine photos. If you put on the top, if you put the camera on this tripod, uh, you can um, you create that your camera doesn't move when you click the click the uh, button. Okay, so. Um, it's good to fix. You don't have, in fact, you don't have to uh, to use tripod. You can put the uh, you can put the camera on anything you want to. Let's say let it be some kind of box, okay? Tissues box because I am a little bit ill, okay? Tissues box, okay? Let's go and it's standing still, okay? If I put it's still standing still. I'm not holding the camera on my hand okay camera goes uh, goes back uh, one more thing that i want to show you you saw uh, mm -hmm. on presentation you saw some uh, some photos with smoke this is this uh, uh, electronic cigarette okay and I will show you how it works. You don't take it the you can't take the the smoke to directly to your lungs lungs, but uh, only to your mouth. Oh. Okay, this is the uh, this is the um, the smoke, but it's not generating any any great uh, effects. All what you have to do is. Uh, under light to make uh, to create some some kind of backlight for this smoke i used this magic chinese lamp to create a backlight for the smoke uh, if you use at the background or on on my hand oh it doesn't look really nice oh but here you can see on my finger there is a green line, there is a uh, pink line, and uh, at the center of the light of this lamp, there is a blue blue light. This is a great and cheap lamp from, from Chinese. Yeah, I don't prefer buying things from, uh, from China. <laughs> because um, I think it's uh, original and, okay, doesn't matter. And uh, let's go back to the, the reflection. And if I take the, the smoke and underlight it, the effects will be much greater. Let's see. Here you can see, you can observe the light is, uh, the, the smoke is colored. Oh, and this is how I create the, the smokes on my photograph. Have I something more for you? I think yes. Uh, you have to use a lot of kind, lot of kind, lot kind of, lots of kind of light sources. Let's say it can be a Chinese lamp, it can be a desk lamp, it can be a torch light, it can be a headlamp. Headlamp is really nice uh, uh, thing for photograph because uh, you have to you have to uh, okay it's it don't have to be headlamp okay that you are putting on your head because you won't do this on uh, board game photography even on home photography the most important thing in this lamp is the zoom if i turn it on uh, now on the background you can see the the spot that is light yes and if i zoom it Yes, that's right. You can highlight only one spot 
on your photography, on your main theme photography. So let's say there is an army of nipples or there is an army of minifigures and you want to uh, create, to make that only the one minifigure will be highlighted. You can use this lamp with uh, with zoom to to make it to make it uh, epic. Let's say. Okay, I think that's all for today because <laughs> I think my time is over. I'm talking with uh, with you almost one one hour, so. Thank you, Board and I Steam, for invitation uh, that I can show you some board, uh, board game tricks and tips. And I think we can uh, we can say goodbye. I hope that we will meet again in the next year. Okay.